Thanks for joining us at Ride On Replicas, where we're proud to bring you the best scale model kit reviews on the planet. This review covers Victory and his Flying Saucer, a model kit from Atlantis, number 1009. No scale is given, but I estimate it at about 1 to 280. The model was released in 2017 and can easily be found at online retailers. And in this graphic, Vic seems to be saying, I'm pretty sure they come in peace. Now I have to give credit to Atlantis for bringing this model out, and it was inspired by the Fawcett Publication comic book from 1950. Back then it was a dime. The main characters are ace pilot Vic Torrey and his flying companion and girlfriend Laura. As fate would have it, our heroes find themselves in a flying saucer accidentally headed for Mercury. Now conditions on Mercury seem to be identical to Earth's, but that was before science knew that the temperatures ranged from 280 negative to 800 degrees plus Fahrenheit, with basically no atmosphere. But since they didn't know, they were free to imagine it as a great vacation spot. Now the kit's molded in bright yellow and dark blue styrene and comes with a, an LED strobe light that includes a three-pack battery of AG3 uh, button-style watch batteries. When you're done, the kit's about five and a quarter inches in diameter and about two inches high. Oh, uh, that sounds like Newt. He's uh, tapping on the divider there. It sounds like maybe he's got a question. Um, come on in here, Newt. Uh, what's your question? Wow, that's really cool, but quite different from your usual reviews. It looks kind of familiar. Like some kind of old movie or TV show? It seems to me Atlantis models uh, weren't the first to be inspired by the comic book, though. The mid-60s TV series Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea featured a, a FS-1 flying submodel, which has an uncanny resemblance to our spaceship here on the right. Here are the contents of the kit. As you can see, there's not much to it. Uh, just a few pieces to put together, and the... Uh, LED module there at the top. It goes together just like any other model. It's styrene, so you can use glue on it, but I found it wasn't necessary. Everything kind of snaps together. When you first get the kit, you'll find that the, um, the main body is uh, uh, put together, so don't try to pry it apart. Just twist it uh, counterclockwise from the bottom. And you see there the module where you'll install the uh, LED light later on. Here's the strobe unit, and it's probably the most interesting part of this kit. It's very bright, and it's knurled on the outside edges, so it'll stay in position inside, and it's easy to open. Now, you'll be able to uh, just unscrew it and screw it back in after you get it installed. And then uh, inside, of course, you'll find the, um, the battery pack there. It's just three little simple watch batteries, and that's what powers your unit. But... It's very, very bright and quite illuminating inside the model kit. So you can have some fun with this one. I decided uh, to go ahead and add a little uh, reflector. So I used uh, the, the module there to give me an idea of height. And I uh, cut a piece of uh, reflective material from the bottom of a display case. It's got a little mirror-like finish on it. Now just shape it so that it fits inside your... Um, assembly and then you can just tape it or glue it into place and you could make that out of uh, gold metal foil or a piece of tin or just about anything so that you get a little reflectivity towards the front windows. I didn't want to stymie the whole thing because I like lighting the interior uh, in a, a dark area. But here it is uh, with the unit um, base tapped into into the uh, bottom there or I should say the top and you just Put a screwdriver in the middle and, and drive it down so that it stays into position. Now you can add, uh, as you see, the, um, the light unit itself, the battery pack itself, and then the, the light unit on top of that. And once you turn that in, uh, it'll just light right up um, and uh, reflect that uh, towards the uh, front of the vehicle. So now we're going to take the, um, the exhaust uh, modules and, and the plate there. The mounting plate and we're going to trim off a little bit of flash that's uh, from the uh, stems uh, where uh, the sprue attaches to them. 
uh, and then clean those off so that they will slide into the slots provided for those nozzles and plates uh, easily. They go right, right into position there. Now we're going to snap those into position uh, so that um, we can paint the model without the uh, paint entering you know, in from the back end there. And we're also going to take a piece of tape and cover up the windows. Now, uh, I didn't, uh, there, there may have been at one time a uh, design for uh, windows that could go in here and you could actually add some with a little piece of, um, you know, material. Um, but um, there wasn't one that I saw. And now we can uh, paint the model and here uh, we started out with a little duplicolor light gray primer. And you, you got to watch those ridges. Now this, uh, this paint uh, can work uh, well out of a spray can because there's really no detail to hide. Um, so a uh, quick and convenient and easy spray can paint job will be just fine for this. Or well, we got that uh, nicely um, um, primed. We're going to um, uh, prime the other side and get it ready for the um, a paint which uh, turns out to be a, a gold color. I wanted a, a color that was very close to the comic book color as opposed to the bright uh, yellow. And um, a couple of light coats uh, just making sure that you get into those creases and uh, shadow areas are just what you need. Um, and it turned out to be almost exactly like the uh, comic book color. So as you can see here, it's very nicely done. Um, you can just turn uh, the unit there and uh, then remove the uh, tape from the uh, front windows and you may need to trim those out a little bit if you get any uh, paint residue in there uh, so go ahead and do that and as you can see um, she lights right up and and you'll also get some uh, um, spillover and and uh, you can see some light leak right through the base which uh, turns out to be really nice in a lighted uh, display cabinet and the next we'll do a little detailing here. We're going to paint the, uh, I painted the, uh, the rocket uh, exhaust uh, there, a uh, aluminum uh, silver color. So um, I just use a little Tamiya silver hand paint there. Just uh, give it a good uh, coat. Uh, make sure you uh, move any brush strokes out of the way. Later on, I'll also uh, paint the uh, mounting plates there flat black on the inside of the engines uh, and uh, also in the body there where they go into position but uh, I also used a little bit of aluminum on the uh, what looked to be like a um, I don't know a, a rotational rocket row of rocket engines there on the edge now let's face it you can super detail this if you like uh, you could even use uh, retro rockets that are used on like the uh, Apollo moon modules uh, or if you want to cut these off there, there's a lot of things you could do you could add a hatch to this unit um, just about anything you want to do, but it's just a real easy builder, and I, uh, I I treated it that way, and I was interested in the quick build and the nice effects of that lighting module. You can see here that the um, uh, mounting plates for the uh, rocket engines have been painted flat black. We're going to break the uh, the mounting piece. Uh, I use a little popsicle stick there to hold those while I painted them and and snap those into position at the uh, back end of the unit uh, and uh, your detailing is just about done um, you see the thrusters on the side the engines are in place and um, they look they look pretty nice just as they are it's a nice clean build uh, but you ha can do as much as you want with it so now we'll put the uh, base together there's just four pieces including the main base and three legs um, they just slide in and uh, instructions have you glue those in place but they stayed put. You could put a little dab of glue there, um, even from the underneath, a little liquid cement or something, uh, to keep them in position once you get them uh, all pointed in the correct uh, direction. And, and so now we're going to um, put the unit together um, and then uh, add that to the top of the display base. Once again, a, a simple twist uh, there, and um, you'll be back in business. And you can mount it just like this. It's a nice little display base. Uh, once you get it into position, uh, just make sure that it's, well, whatever attitude you want to point it in or um, put a little elevation on the front like I did here. And uh, it looks just fine on the base and your model is now complete. And so here's your model sitting on a, a nice base, but um, 
wait, there's more. Just uh, look at what happens when you place this model inside of a lighted cabinet and you turn out the exterior lights. Um, it will just come to life. You, you can't, uh, I mean, just look at the glow, the internal glow from that uh, mysterious uh, alien engine uh, just sh lighting up the night here with, uh, with our model. And I thought it was very striking, especially under dark conditions. Uh, a little bit of reflection towards the front end, and you've got a beautiful display. So, if you see one of these cruising through the night sky coming uh, overhead, uh, get out your camera for the Air Force so they can classify it. Um, but if I were you, um, I'd find this model just ripe for possibilities. For example, what about a fleet of them, uh, three or four, heading towards a model of the Pentagon? Um, I mean, it's a nice model kit in and in its own right, but it's got distinct diorama possibilities. Now, uh, there weren't any windows or decals. It was just an easy builder. But you could add complete bridges inside of it, uh, change the thrusters, and, and come up with something really interesting with such a simple model. But uh, it's ripe for possibilities. So if I were you, I'd buy one and put it on my shelf. Well, we hope you like this step-by-step -step scale model kit review. And so that you don't miss any more, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can do that by clicking on the icon on the lower right hand of any of our reviews, or you can find us on Facebook or at our website, rightonreplicas.com. Thanks! This review is brought to you in part by Dean's Hobby Stop in Owasso, Michigan. Dean's has one of the Midwest's largest selections of used kits at great prices. They also feature new kits and supplies as well. Call Dean's to get their mail order list featuring hundreds of vintage kits or check their website for great deals on both new and classic models. This review is brought to you in part by Dean's Hobby Stop in Owasso, Michigan. Dean's has one of the Midwest's largest selections of used kits at great prices. They also feature new kits and supplies as well. Call Dean's to get their mail order list featuring hundreds of vintage kits or check their website for great deals on both new and classic models.